صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا ما عاهدوا الله عليه فمنهم من قضى نحبه ومنهم من ينتظر وما بدلوا تبديلا صدق الله العلي العظيم In the forefront of every society are few categories of people. And in the forefront of all these categories are the scholars, the ulama. Al ulama. أمناء الله تعالى على الناس. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم says, Allah has trustees here, trustees who are taking care of His creatures, taking care of the people on earth, and those trustees are the ulama, the scholars. And the Prophet himself صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم says. فضل العالم على غيره كفضل النبي على أمته. The value, فضل here means the value. The value of the scholar in his community is like the value of the messenger of God over people. And the Prophet himself says, صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم, علماء أمتي أفضل من أنبياء بني إسرائيل. The scholars, the true scholars, who study, who learn, to serve, to protect, to guide, to lead people to the right path. The genuine scholars. Scholars who dedicate their life only for God. شهد الله أن له لا إله إلا هو والملائكة وأول العلم قائما بالقسط. وأول العلم. People of knowledge. Allah says those people are in the forefront of every community. And He says in سورة الزمر. أو or a zumar. قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون. Obviously those who study, those who know, those who are aware, يعلمون. Are different. Are different from those who don't know. They are not equal. They are not equal. In another verse, Allah says, يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات. The Lord would raise those who have faith and those who have knowledge. You cannot strip knowledge from faith. It's going to be a disaster if we strip. Knowledge and ilm from faith, it is going to be a disaster. And I will tell you soon how it is, how we have some disasters like that. And the Prophet ﷺ says, قَلِيلٌ مِّنَ الْعِلْمِ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ كَثِيرٌ مِّنَ الْعِبَادَةِ Beautiful hadith. A little bit of knowledge is much better than a lot of worshipping. Because knowledge saves you, saves you. Knowledge guides you. 
knowledge enlightens you. And if you take knowledge away from ibadah, ibadah is not going to be functional. Sometimes this ibadah, rather than taking you into the right direction, it takes you exactly in the, in the opposite direction, in the wrong direction. قَلِيلٌ مِّنَ الْعِلْمِ Small amount of knowledge is much better than a huge amount of ibadah and worship and service. Because that service, that type of service is fruitless. The service, the ibadah, which does not have understanding. I mentioned two weeks ago here at this podium. Allah says, my signs are only read by ulil albab, not by all. وَمَا يَتَذَكَّرُ إِلَّا أُلُو الْأَلْبَابِ إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُلِي الْأَلْبَابِ My signs cannot be read by all. These are special signs. These are signs for those who have reason and aql. And they incorporate their aql. But if they have jahl, ignorance, they cannot read my signs. Therefore, their service and their dedication and their ibadah is void is invalid. It will be rendered useless. Naumun, Allahu Akbar. How many things I was looking today in Kitab al-Ilm, the virtues of studying and learning, the virtues of those who become scholars. Naumun, ma'a ilmin khayrun min salatin ma'a jahl. If you sleep, go to your bed and do nothing but sleep. But you are knowledgeable. Better than standing for a prayers while you are non unknowledgeable. Jai. Today the problem of Islam is not from non-Muslims. From Muslims who are jahil, who are ignorant. This is our problem in Islam today. From Muslims who do pray, who do fast, but they are ignorant. They don't use their reason. And thus the Prophet says, أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ قِيمَةً أَكْثَرُهُمْ عِلْمًا وَأَقَلُّ النَّاسِ قِيمَةً أَقَلُّهُمْ عِلْمًا What is the value of people in the community, in the market? There is a value for everything. And also there is a value for us. There is a price tag. We have a price tag. The Prophet says, the greater your knowledge, the greater your value in the eyes of Allah. The less your knowledge, unfortunately, the less it is your value in the eyes of God. It's not by your family neither by your blood nor by your citizenship. These things have no value with God. God says, I have these. My standards are the following. Knowledge and taqwa. Knowledge and taqwa. يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ Those who have faith, taqwa. وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ And those who have knowledge. Both. The combination of both. It makes, you, it makes you the nearest and the closest to Allah. Ilm is important because the scholars have a bigger responsibility and bigger duty than the rest of us. And therefore the Prophet wasallam. He says, تَنَاصَحُوا فِي الْعِلْمِ when you have knowledge, be honest when you deliver it. Be honest. Tanasahu means be honest. When you give your knowledge, when you pass your knowledge to others, be honest. Don't cheat. فَإِنَّ خِيَانَةَ أَحَدِكُمْ فِي عِلْمِهِ أَشَدُّ مِنْ خِيَانَتِهِ فِي مَالِهِ Khiyana, dishonesty. When someone steals, steals money, they call him 
Chain, dishonest. The Prophet says, if you steal from knowledge, is worse than stealing from money. When someone steals money, he hurts one person, one family, one neighborhood. But if someone steals from knowledge, how does he steal? He learns and he knows what is right and what is wrong. But because of the government, because of his salary, because of his position, they put him imam in this place, in this masjid, in this awqaf, in this. He does not speak the truth. He favors the sultan. He does not favor God. He does not favor the truth. When Sheikh Nimr was executed, Al-Azhar al-Sharif, they call it al-Sharif. Al-Sharif. Al-Sharif who has no sharaf. They blessed this execution. They said, yes, Saudi Arabia did the right thing. He deserves death. He deserves death because we need to implement justice. Implement justice. You know, Azhar al-Sharif, he was blessing Husni Mubarak when he was killing the innocent people. They have to condemn if they want to implement justice. Why they don't speak about Saudi Arabia? What Saudi Arabia are doing with their dissidents in Bahrain, killing innocent people in Yemen, women and children, people who have no weapon, people who are, who are in their homes. <coughs> Where is the Azhar? Why don't they speak justice here? Where is justice here? This is the Azhar, which is non-Sharif, non-Sharif, Khabith. They don't speak the truth. This is not me, this is Allah. Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا بَيَّنَّاهُ لِلنَّاسِ فِي الْكِتَابِ أُولَٰئِكَ يَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّاعِنُونَ Those scholars who يَكْتُمُونَ, they conceal, they don't speak the truth. The truth that we sent in this book to people. They know it, they study it, but they choose not to speak it because of their, their own interests. To protect their own interests. Ula'ik, such people are going to be cursed by God. Yal'anuhum Allah. Wa yal'anuhum Allah'anun. And the community of the believers should curse them. This is not Sharif. Sharif, an honorable person when he speaks the truth. One thing we learn in Islam, that we must speak the truth at any cost. This is the difference between someone who is religious and someone who is non-religious. The non-religious looks at his or her interest and then they act or react. But someone who is religious, he looks at God first. What does God want me to do in this situation? Should I support or should I condemn? Should I be with or should I be against? We have to look at God. Not because Saudi Arabia, they wire money to Azhar, to certain shayateen there then they bless them. Not only Azhar, Azhar is one example. There are many shayateen, alhamdulillah, in all Muslim countries. Many shayateen. Beautiful the hadith of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sharrun nas. Remember this hadith, my friends. Remember it, write it down. Remember this hadith. Sharrun nas, the worst person, the most unfortunate person, Man ba'a akhiratahu bidunya. The one who trades his akhirah with the dunya. He sells the akhirah cheaply because of few days in this life. Wa sharrun min. Worse than him. Man ba'a akhiratahu bidunya ghayrah. If he sells his akhirah, not for his own dunya, for the dunya of the sultan. This is exactly what the scholars of Saudi Arabia and Egypt do. 
They are selling their Akhira not for their dunya because they know they are going to stay five more years, ten more years, and then they go to Jahannam. But they sell it to support Salman ibn Abdul Aziz, the corrupt royal family, to get a few dollars, few reals from them. They sell their Akhira. They sell it cheaply. Islam has a problem today. And the problem of Islam is from two categories. Alimun qasama dhahri ithnan. The Prophet says, My back was broke by two categories. These two categories, they have broken my back. Alimun mutahattik. Alim. Scholar, he has knowledge, but he has no honor. He has knowledge, but he has no heart. He has knowledge, but he has no piety, no taqwa. Alimun mutahattik. Wa jahilun, on the other hand, someone who's jahil, ignorant, Bedouin, he comes from the desert, he doesn't know how to clean himself, he wants to be a scholar, he wants to be a leader, like Daesh, the barbaric people of Daesh. They want to rule Islam and rule the Muslim countries. The Prophet says, these two groups, they have broken my back. So here the Prophet says, the khiyana, the treason, is not when someone steals money. Though it is bad, it's not good. But someone who steals the fact and the truth from people, he conceal it. This is real khayana. Because he's misguiding and misleading the masses. Misleading them. You know, as soon as they murdered Sheikh Nimr, the first person who blessed it was the Mufti of Saudi Arabia. He's really Mufti. In Farsi, he's really Mufti. He's a broke. Broke from akhlaq, broke from the fear of God. He said, yes, the Sultan, alhamdulillah, Allah enabled our leader, our waliul amr, our Sultan, our king, to put an end to those such and such and such and such. He was the first one to bless. The same mufti, he was defending Yazid ibn Muawiyah. He said Yazid ibn Muawiyah did well when he murdered Hussein because Hussein deserves death. The same Mufti, <coughs> Ali Sheikh, the same Mufti today. He said because Hussein, his revolution, his stand was illegal. Was illegal. Muawiyah was a leader, legitimate caliph. And Hussein, he rose against him, so Hussein deserves death. Hussein, Sayyid Shababi Ahlul Jannah. They write in their own books. Al Hassan wal Hussein, Sayyid Shababi Ahlul Jannah. So he deserves death by Yazid ibn Muhammad. And thousands of people, they believe him and they follow him. They follow this Mufti. The same way they followed Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. Same way. We have jahl and ignorance spreading in the Muslim societies and Muslim communities. And such communities, Allah is not going to help them. A community that prefers jahl and ignorance and misguidance above guidance, such community is not going to be helped by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such community is going to be the real and disgraced and they will beg help from foreigners, from others. I'm sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna rabbaka labil mirsad He is well aware. He knows what, what is happening. And he knows that this man Sheikh al nimr was a very innocent man. He never called 
upon people to carry weapon or to throw even stones or to use bullets or to use violence against the regime. He used to say that my words are stronger than bullets. He used to call upon the young people in the eastern province, don't use violence. Use your wisdom. Peaceful demonstrations, always peaceful demonstrations. Does he deserve death? Because the Saudi regime, they cannot stand criticism. Someone who's insecure, someone who's evil, someone who's dictator, someone who's illegitimate, someone who stole the whole Hejaz, the whole Arabian Peninsula. Bunch of thugs. al Saud, they were thugs. Thugs. Bedouin thugs in the Arabian Peninsula. They hijacked the whole country. They took it over a hundred years ago. They invaded Hejaz, Mecca, Medina, and they dominated the land not by democracy, not by popular consent, by blood, by sword. And even today, their shi'ar is a sword. Do you see the sword? And they murdered Sheikh Nimr by the sword. They beheaded him. This is what they do. Inna rabbaka labil A few years ago, Sheikh Hassan Shahata in Egypt, one of the humble mashayikh there, who preached the school of Ahlul Bayt, was brutally murdered. Ten days after that, Muhammad Morsi collapsed. Ten days after that. The blood of Sheikh Nimr and his friends, three of his friends who were murdered by the Saudi regime, is not going to be ignored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not going to be ignored. I spoke with his son the same day they beheaded the father. I called his son, his young son, 28 years old, Muhammad. He's here in Indiana. And I said to him, listen, if they killed your father, we are all here. Your brothers and your fathers. You are not alone. If they took away your father from you, we are your family. You are not alone. Hundreds of thousands of people are your family, your brothers. He has three sisters with him here. I said, you are not alone. And believe me, Muhammad, your father's blood is going to bring this regime down, inshallah. Allah does not forget. Inna Allah yumhilu wa la yuhmil. Allah gives respite. Allah is patient, but does not forget. Allah does not forget. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, the job of the alim, the scholar, وَمَا أَخَذَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ عَلَىٰ الْعُلَمَاءِ عَلَىٰ أَنْ لَا يُقَارُ عَلَىٰ كِذَّةِ ظَالِمٍ وَلَا سَغَبِ مَظْلُومٍ Allah said, Allah made a pledge with the scholars. He made a pledge with them. He took a pledge from them. أَنْ لَا يُقِرُّ They do not become silent on the injustice of a tyrant. Neither the starvation of a hungry person. So their work is political and social too. Political, they have to stand against injustice. Wherever it is found, the Saudis, they say, this is our internal job, internal business. You have nothing to do with that. No, no. First of all, he's a human being. And Allah teaches me in this book that Al Saud are wrong. Allah says, "Man qatal nafsan bi ghayri nafsan aw fasad fi al ard, fa kaanma qatal al nas jamia." If an innocent person, whether in Saudi Arabia or elsewhere, is killed for no justification, no reason, as if he had killed, as if he has killed the entire humanity. So he's a human being. He belongs to our family. 
Number two, he's a scholar. He belongs to the masses, to the ummah, not just to one neighborhood, one region, one country. The scholars, they transcend these boundaries. They transcend. A scholar belongs to all the masses, all the mu'mineen, all the followers of Ahlul Bayt, rather to the Muslim community too, worldwide. So we have to defend him. The man, his guilt was to only criticize the regime, this corrupt regime, and he was asking for one thing, equality. He would say to the regime that, please treat us just like any other citizen in this kingdom. No more. When it comes to jobs, to employment, to education, to health care, to other benefits, to the judiciary system, treat us equal, equal citizens. That was his guilt. That was his crime. And this barbaric regime who sees himself above others. Why he sees himself above others? Because all ulama, ulama usu, the Wahhabi, when they bow down before the king, and they keep telling him, Ahsant, 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 Ahsant. You are the representative of God on earth. Waliyul Amr. They call him Waliyul Amr. So of course, he would think that he's Waliyul Amr. He's everything. He's representing God on earth. Whatever he's doing is right. And if you criticize him, then you are criticizing God. This is what they say. This is what they say. You should not criticize him. You should keep silent. This is what we have. The system, this is what we have. If you, if you reject, leave this place. You are not a citizen. See how they not only hijack the land, they hijacked the name, name of Al Jazeera Al Arabiya, it became Saudi Arabia. Allahu Akbar. Jazeera Al Arabiya, for since God created this earth, the name of that peninsula is Al Jazeera Al Arabiya. They changed the whole name into Saudi Arabia. And they hijacked the freedom, the dignity of the people there. People are treated like animals, worse than animals. You have to do bay'ah. Whenever one of the kings perishes, goes to Jahannam, the second king, king comes and the th first thing they do, people line up, people line up like sheep, like goats. They line up and they have to shake hands and do bay'ah. And people of other places, they can't come to Riyadh to see the king to shake hands. So they shake hands with his governors in other places cities and other states the governor sits there and they shake hand with him as if they are shaking hand with with the king with the sultan it reminds me of yazid and muawiyah and bani umayyah and bani al abbas and all the tyrants but they could not stay and al saud are not going to stay Al Saud are not going to stay. Because if they are going to stay, it means that there is something wrong with God's system of justice. And Hasha Lillah. Allah does not have any wrong in His justice. Allah says, Some more patience. Some more patience. We will take them. Those people who spread mischief in every land, in every country. Those people who nurture terrorism and radicalism and hate among religions, among madahib, they are not going to exist. A day is going to come that you will see, inshallah, right before your eyes, what will happen to those barbaric thugs who are ruling them. But we have to get together, the mu'mineen. Allah says the job, the responsibility of the believers, the mu'mineen, is to get together. We have to work together. 
We have to purify our near. If we, if we seek Nasr, Nasr and victory, Allah says you have to get together. Purify your near. Look at me, work for me. Dedicate your life, your amal, your deeds for me. I will send victory upon you. There were many activities happening in America and Canada and Europe and elsewhere in defense of Sheikh Baqir and Nimr rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. Many memorials took place and I was also today earlier speaking to one of the friends who is trying to help his family, his children. He has four, three daughters and one son. And I met his son actually two weeks ago at a conference before they killed his father. Very nice family, very humble family. And they, obviously they cannot go back to that country now under these circumstances. So some of the mu'mineen are trying to help them. I just wanted you to know about that. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him and forgive us and accept him and admit him into his, his blessing. His mercy. يَا أَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسُ الْمُطْمَئِنَّ تُرْجِعِي إِلَىٰ رَبِّكِ رَاضِيَةً مَرْضِيَةً وَادْخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي وَادْخُلِي جَنَّتِي صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك ماح السيئات Please let's recite Amman Yajibu Al Mufdar. A'udhu Billahi Min Al Shaytan Al Rajim. Bismillahi Al Rahman Al Rahim. Amman Yajibu Al Mufdar. Ida Da'an Wa Yakshifu Al Su. Amman Yajibu Al Mufdar. Ida Da'an Wa Yakshifu Al Su. Amman Yajibu Al Mufdar. Ida Da'an Wa Yakshifu Al Su. أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُفْطَرْ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُفْطَرْ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ يَا اللَّهُ مَنْ عَلَى مَرْضَانَا بِالشِّفَاءِ وَالْعَافِيَةِ اللهم اكشف هذه الغمة عن هذه الأمة اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أهلك أعداء الدين وأهلك الظالمين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم امنا بالنصر العاجل على إخوتنا المؤمنين في كل مكان يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا واجعلنا اللهم من أنصاره وأعوانه وعجل في فرجه وإلى أرواح الشهداء وأرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات and to the soul of سماحة الشيخ المجاهد نمر باقر النمر and also the mother of our dear brother أسامة العطار who passed away yesterday for their soul الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد